good early morning. We're so glad you're here. We daily vlog, so if you enjoy this video, make sure you come back every day. Today, happy Monday. Happy Monday. And today is not like a typical Monday. You should not have the case of the Mondays today, at least not until like 2 p.m. today, because today's Patriots Day, which means Boston Marathon. Um, and I, you guys know, I like, there's like a few like runners I love to watch and follow, but I actually have a close friend running the marathon today. He is an incredible runner. My friend Kristen is out there running or supporting him, cheering him on. I'll be watching, looking for him on the TV. I have his bib tracking on the app. He is looking for a good, strong finish. First time Boston runner. I think he's trying for top like three or 400. Um, I hope I can see him. So I'm going to be excited to trip be tracking him. I think I have a meeting right when the marathon starts, but I think I should, I don't have any meetings when his projected finish time comes. So, busy start to the week. Mouthful of muffin, and he's been dragging his plate. Hey, Everse, 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 chill. He's been dragging his plate, his ball pit around all morning. All right, so we got this neck and neck race to finish the women's professional at Boston Marathon. Our friend John is looking looking good for his goal. John just. Crossed 21.7 miles after Heartbreak Hill and Boston route, and so he's speeding up now. James and I are eating some oatmeal, cheering John on. Say booyah. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> this canine is totally like pop through. We're dealing with this runny nose situation. He's been having a morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, we're cheering you on from Chicago. I'm stressing. So our plans today changed because of James not feeling so great. And it's really chilly and potentially going to be raining tonight. We were going to go to the Cubs game. That's why I'm wearing a Cubs shirt. Um, but it just, just didn't seem right with his runny nose and the weather. Um, Unfortunately, we were gonna be with Tyler tonight, but there will be other games, um, and I was able to give some friends the tickets, so they will be put to good use. Then, at the very last minute, we are finalizing our taxes today. Um, so that was something that we wanted to make sure we had enough time for, which, even if we went to the Cubs game, I think we would have been fine, but that is something else important that we have to do today because in America it's tax day. It's the deadline or deadline to ask for an extension. So our fun night has turned into a less fun night, but we will figure out something fun to do. James has really been liking his dinosaurs. Oh, nice knee work. All right, went with another pot belly sandwich pickup. Ready to go, got it already. Gonna drive back home. It is 37 out. Ooh, I'm ready for it to be in the 50s all the time. It's always fun when Casey posts a vlog. So we're gonna do a Q and A in today's vlog. I ask for questions on Instagram. So that'll be coming. Vegan. Peter got a, the Mediterranean sandwich from Pot Belly with no chicken or feta. It's got hummus on it, all kinds of veggies. Mine is not vegan. But I like literally just crave sandwiches constantly. Is that good? It was recording, alright. I don't know how emotionally stable we are right now. I'm drinking apple cider. Because if it's gonna be four degrees outside, 
I'm gonna act like it's four degrees outside. We were we were out and about in our neighborhood the other day, and some guy's like nice coat. He's wearing the same Walt Disney World coat as Peter. That was cool, wasn't it? Ziegler, it was cool. We got questions from Instagram. We haven't done a Q and A in since uh, Hurricane Irma. <laughs> Do we think it's been that long? No, we might have done a live stream that was a Q&A. Yeah. We haven't like sat down and done a video in a long time. Um, I'm just going to go from the bottom and we'll get through as many as we can before it seems like it's... Oh gosh. <laughs> it's like a really long video. Ready, set. Go. Christina. Who is the better cook? You are Christina. Me. <laughs> I would say... I think I'm more versatile than Christina. <laughs> no, she's asking about me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you. I think that Christina currently comes up with better ideas, and I like... We have, like, two very different styles. Yeah, that's what I mean by that, is that uh, Christina's very, like, pan-oriented. Mm-hmm. You? I feel like I'm more like experimental. Yeah, and you use like a broader range of like, you could be frying stuff, you could be air frying stuff, it can be a stew, it can be a dry thing, it can be a salad. But like uh -huh. everything with Christina is based on like, a big I do pot think pan. that like Christina cooks really like good flavor. Like she knows like really good flavors. Yeah, you both, you're both really good cooks. So there's going to be spit in my food on Sunday <laughs> for that answer. How did Peter get into running? How did you get started and then start enjoying it? <laughs> well, the enjoyment part is an ongoing battle. Yeah. You just never went running tonight like you were supposed to. Instead, you were doing this when you are eating chocolate. Um... I started running because of Sarah's dad and because of health reasons and wanting to be healthy. Yeah, when we started to go through infertility treatments. I want to not die as young as I would if I didn't run. Mm -hmm. and Simple as that. You got started by just going out like the littlest bit. Going out for a mile every day. Then it mm -hmm. turned into two miles, then it turned into four miles, then it turned into longer miles. Mm -hmm. And I started enjoying it probably... <laughs> Seven months in? Yeah. I would say so too. I think like once you start like feeling good and all that sort of stuff came with it. So like seven months. What were your DCP roles and what is your favorite DCP memory? QSR, aka Quick Service. Food. Um, Peter worked at the Electric Umbrella at Eckert. RIP. And I worked much nice in Frontierland selling Splash Mountain photos in Lower Frontierland, if you didn't know what they call the area by Splash and Big Thunder Lower. And then Upper is Big um, Country Bridge and Bree. So I worked in like the pin shop, Prairie Outpost, which is like the sweet shop, and then the hat R. shop. R.I.P. R.I.P. Seriously. <laughs> the hoedown came back today, though. That's really exciting. Favorite part? Favorite memory? Well, it was really cool that the college program allowed my dad and family to come down. We didn't realize it then, but it would be my dad's last trip. So that was pretty cool, you getting to go to Disney with my dad. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Expecting my first baby in August. Curious about which brands you got for bassinet, swing, etc. Our bassinet is Halo. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Which we love. Mm -hmm. um, it's like not... It's not like super, super fancy, but it does have like vibration and a little light. It's just a little fancy. Yeah, and it can like swivel. Our swing, I have no idea. I think it's Greco, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's Greco. I think our swing, I feel like a swing is like more basic, where it's just like as long as it moves, you're good. <laughs> more basic than a bassinet, which is a box on a, a basket on a stick. But I do really <laughs> like our baby Bjorn. Carrier, I know oh, yeah. that wasn't listed, oh, yeah. but like the quality of that is top notch. I think I would recommend that, and I also recommend Burt's Bees. They do like a lot of 100% cotton 
everything's so like our bath towels, our Burt's Bees. We had a lot of socks at our Burt's Bees, burp cloths, all that. Um, 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 when your kids are of school age, will they be homeschool, public school, or private school? So the honest to goodness answer is TBD. Depends on where we'll be most of the time, um, how we feel at that time. Right now, our leading feel is homeschool. Mm -hmm. but we're a couple of years to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. I feel like this, like schools are in like a big transition right now. Yeah, I favor. And so I think that it'll really depend on how things are. I favor public over private. I, I favor Illinois system over Florida system. But we could start a Montessori in Alaska by the time <laughs> our kids are in school. Right. So. Um, I was wondering. How Peter is doing with his sleep? Did you ever do another sleep study? My sleep is terrible. I did not do another study. I should probably do another one. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. Um, and what is your all-time favorite food item at Disney World? This is from another fellow Ohana, Sarah. Ohana pot stickers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really, really good one. I, I feel like the butter and bread with the sea salt from California Grill is really good. Yeah. That's a good rando one. I honestly can't think of anything off the top of my head. Like, I have to get rid of some of this stuff because Eve's going to kill me. Okay. You go to the next question. Well, I can, well, I can think. Tree barbecue, barbecue sauce. You really do. I do. That's a fact. Yeah, and I love like barbecue sauce is my favorite condiment, and so I, I just really love it. Favorite character dining spot at Walt Disney World. <sighs> Did you like Chef Mickey's enough for that to be your favorite? I like Garden Grill. I feel like they come around a lot. But it's almost like a borderline too much. Um, oh, it's been so long since we've been doing those. We enjoyed our. I like Crystal Palace. We did that years I ago like before Crystal we Palace. vlogged. And I also like. Um, is it Prime Time? No. No. Um, the Hollywood and Vine. Hollywood and Vine's my favorite. Yeah. I mean, like I'm thinking specifically the Halloween. Which was probably the best. I think it's cool that they do dinner the different experience. Things. Yeah. I um, haven't heard great things about it when it came back, but I think that everything's just trans, like in a transitional period. So. What is your favorite Disney resort, and how many have you stayed? Stayed at a lot. I think I we could probably figure out which ones we haven't stayed. Just like Yacht Club. Crescent Lake's my favorite that area. Actual contemporary, we've never stayed. Wilderness Lodge is my favorite resort. Yeah, Wilderness Lodge is my favorite resort. And then we haven't stayed at All Star Sports. But or Art of Animation. We haven't stayed at Art of Animation? Mm -hmm. oh, we just hung out there on that then. Yeah, they I got think a good cafeteria. Else we've stayed. They have that one pop that doesn't, the sensors don't work. You can just go get a pop. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Do you see yourselves moving back to Florida? Oh, yeah. This is like one of the bigger, um, bigger questions. Um, yeah, we, our goal is to make both places work, but there will be like, we're going to like have to figure out which one will be <gasps> more. Where's she barking out there? There's the bread and peanut butter. Will you go give her a couple pieces, please? Yeah. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to buy a place in one first and then financially and strategically purchase the other place. However, that's going to be whether it's going to be a second property or a vacation home legally or an investment property legally. But the goal is to have somewhere where we, we can live like 50, 50, 60, 40 a year. Basically be in split a lot more than what we have been doing, able, able to achieve since moving back to Chicago. Yeah. And the reason we think that Florida will probably be first on that financial is also that we have like we could live with family here less like 
if that would be easier transition than like being in Florida. We have plenty of friends that we could stay with, but we could actually live. It's different staying, like living for a couple weeks. Right. Like if we buy a place in Florida and then come back and stay with Christina and Grant and their kids and puppy for like six a weeks. A big house where all of us could fit. Yeah, and then go um, to Chicago and then come yeah. back. And I do think somebody else had asked about um, like were we surprised about like how we how much we would miss Florida moving here and I think we weren't going to really know how we felt until we moved back here and then it really like being back here really gave us that idea. I don't think this is the video to explain it in great detail but not to give a cliffhanger but I was surprised moving back how I felt about Chicago mm -hmm. more less than I was surprised that I would have missed for I missed Florida before we moved out of Florida yeah we knew we were I didn't gonna miss, it's Disney World <laughs> I didn't miss I don't miss Florida more than what I thought I would mm -hmm. I feel differently about Chicago than what I yeah. thought I'd feel about Chicago yeah. and I still love Chicago sure. and a few points like and then we can move on to the next question is we did not move to Florida for the weather we didn't realize how much the weather affected our lives so like we lived our whole life in Chicago it being cold and it being but I think we didn't realize how truly pampered we'd be with the weather that we got in Florida um, also just like the accessibility like I really um, underestimated like how much planning would have to go into doing like fun things in Chicago whereas like when we lived in Central Florida it was like we could go in the car and be on Disney property and decide then and there what we were going to do and it be us be able to use our annual pass and do whatever we wanted um, so those are like two big things plus like we never in a gazillion years ever saw my mom passing away happening <laughs> three months after we moved back to Chicago. Not even three years after moving back right, to Chicago. Right, so like we had a very different idea of what living in Chicago would be and then our life got turned upside down. So it's been <laughs> difficult. It's been just like not, nothing that we, not as we planned. Yeah. What places are on your travel bucket list? Um. The world. I think our top would be like going to the UK. UK. Australia. Australia. We've talked a lot about Thailand. Thailand. Japan. Yeah. Um, and I think those are like the big ones yeah. that we've, we'll need to do first. Mm -hmm. um, how long after Teddy is born will you wait to do a Disney trip? Um, We're going in, we're going to go in the fall. Yeah, so he'll, he's due a month from today. Uh, so like four or five months. Mm -hmm. and that's really more so because of planning around our life here and also getting being able to get him to travel um, so far. You know, like we brought James to Disney property 10 days after he was born. Yeah. But that's because we were 30 minutes away. Right. Actually, six days. We went to yeah, the went Magic to the resort Kingdom. Ten days. After. Ten days. You went to the resort. Yeah. Six days. Yeah. Any TV or show recommendations? We're in a show hole. Somebody feed Phil. We always say New Girl. New Girl. We're I, really into Bluey right now. We're really into Bluey. <laughs> Everybody in the world, child or childless, mm -hmm. should watch Bluey. Um, I liked Severance on Apple TV Plus. You also really liked For All Mankind. Like you really, really liked that. I really do. Girlfriend, it's all gone. It's all gone. Do you have a favorite children's book that was read to you for you both? Like as a child? I like, think so. Yeah, so my favorite when I was little was Stella Luna, which my mom then found out that I really liked because it was just long and she would stay in my room for a long time. Stella Luna and I think Babar I really, really liked. I liked um, Where the Wild Things Are, Polar Express, and we like reading James, this isn't the question, but we like reading James, this <laughs> good night construction site. We both are like, when the other one brings it up. <laughs> Evie! Don't mind me choking on water. Sorry. She does it every time she drinks it. Okay. 
Uh, what are your all-time favorite foods? Mac and cheese. I'm a big pasta person and chocolate. Where's the one restaurant in Chicago you hope never closes? Al's Beef. Yeah, Al's Beef. And I would say, like, I know Maggiano's is like a chain, but the Our original Maggiano's, one, yeah. like, that would be really, really sad if they closed. That's where we had our wedding. How many kids would you like to have? Was what was your, always your dream number? We had talked about six for a long time, and then we really struggled to have one, <laughs> so we were like, let's, like, anything can happen. And so I feel like now, every pregnancy, we feel very fortunate, but we still envision ourselves having more. more. How long will you stay in your apartment for? Where is, would your forever home be? Wait, also we have four embryos that are also frozen. Yeah. So, like our, I think, well, we'll have to see. Yeah. But that is just a We're losing detail. battery. Oh gosh. How long will you stay in your apartment for? Where would your forever home be? We kind of touched on that. Our lease is until next March at this place. Yeah. I think we'll really, once, we, we plan on moving out when Teddy is about eight months. And I think that that'll probably be like the longest we could stay here as far as like size goes. What exactly does Peter do for work? So I currently do, I work for a timeshare company based in Orlando and I do compliance and control management. Do you guys make money from the blog? What made you start it originally? I was talking about this at work a lot lately and it's because I was showing people at work. Um, we do make some money from the vlog. It's basically just covers a couple of our expenses, our theme park expenses, but nothing insane. Um, what made you start originally? The original reason and the still reason why it's around is because it's a virtual, it's a video diary. It's a, a way to seal our memories in visual form. How excited are you guys for the new season of Somebody Feed Phil? So excited! So excited. And it's right when um... Teddy's due, which is fun because the last one came out right when James was due. So I don't know if we'll be in the hospital. I don't think we'll be in the hospital then, like we were for the last one. Ideal birth plan for Teddy. Ideally, no intervention as far as beginning labor. Like no induction. I go into labor on my own. And we have uneventful time in the hospital <laughs> but like that's like one ideal plan and then the other ideal plan is if that doesn't happen to have a scheduled c-section boom favorite thing about being a mom and or dad it's so cool that we are his people like that we are the ones he goes to for the most ultimate comfort we've babysat for so long we've been aunts and uncles We've been fun people to play with, but like knowing that we're his like top choice is very fulfilling. I like when he holds my arm. Yeah. Um, any advice for new parents? Psst. Give yourself grace. Yeah, it's a I think different that, challenge every day. Yeah, I think that that's like uh, we're we are go with the flow people, and that really helps us. But I think, like, managing your expectations to, like, know your, no matter what, like, you're doing your absolute best and, like, enjoying little everyday moments, like, making them special. So, like, take a lot of pictures. We take video of every single day, so we have, like, overload. But I would definitely suggest documenting. Favorite quiet or secluded spot in all of Walt Disney World property? Gosh, say any like nook in World Showcase, which I guess like if you want to get, I mean I guess they all kind of have like a back area, like a, we like World Showcase a lot, so. We really do, mm -hmm. we really do. Pet peeves, um, leaving 
the label or sticker Why on things. <laughs> Everything I take the sticker, and then if it doesn't come off cleanly, then I need to clean it. I don't know if it's a pet peeve, but ever since somebody once told me that you're not, you shouldn't say. I used to work in the service industry, like frontline facing, that you shouldn't say no problem, because that implies that there was a problem, even even though the majority of the time people say that there never was a problem. So now when anybody ever says no problem, I'm like, but what was the problem? <laughs> right. Uh, what is your favorite race you've done with ACS Chicago? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I, let's say, I think like our first dopey was super memorable. Yeah. And it was fun, like meeting everyone and that first, like just like the first of it all. What is your fave option for breakfast in the Magic Kingdom? Such a hard choice because we're not the biggest fans of Magic Kingdom food. Probably Crystal Palace. The camera died, so I'm gonna use our iPhone and wrap it up. I mean, I think we covered a lot. We're at like, and it's like we're like 18 minutes. It's been like this. nice um, variety of questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, we really, really liked the breakfast croissant sandwich at the bakery before it changed to Starbucks. And sometimes it's and at... sometimes it's at Westward Ho in Frontierland, except for it's on like a multi-grain croissant, which is fine, but it's just, it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close. So I would say that. Do you guys agree or disagree that the Disney parks were in better hands than our Michael Eisner and even Bob Iger? Some change is good, but too much can turn something upside down. I feel like I was too young to like really know about Michael Eisner's like true leadership. Well, I feel like I... that was the, the parks you growing up, so yeah, it's like I really liked him, <laughs> right? But like, how much of that was you being a little child, yeah, and not understanding park operations, right? But I do know that he did like. He brought a lot of like the characters into Epcot and Hollywood Studios is like, was in its prime under him. I probably am a bigger Michael Eisner fan than I even realized, but I, I can't really answer that question. I feel like I'm not, I'm way too much of like a guest that loves everything. I, I know, but I think like, Knowing the stories of you and your family growing up, knowing the history of like the Eisner era, we've experienced like a third or a half of, or a third probably of the Iger era. I, I think there's too much drama right now in the world, which I think might be part of this questioning for the Chapek era. Like you, you don't, I feel like you can't, it's too early. I think being in the corporate world and seeing Disney's corporate world too for a period of time, a lot of the stuff that, I'm not the biggest JPEG fan, but a lot of the stuff that he's getting flagged for were not his decisions and he wasn't the sole decision maker or those were already set in motion when he came into play. So I think the real question is like Iger or Iger era or Eisner era. And I think it's gonna lean towards Eisner because it's like, that was the, like the advent of the keys. Yeah. That was the advent of the magical moment. Yeah. I also think, too, that there, like, wasn't social media and there wasn't, like, as much nitpicking. Like, I feel like now we learn more about behind-the-scenes things. But it just, like, feels less, like, I don't know, media-driven. And at that point in time, like, it, there was just, like, less, less drama around mm -hmm. it all, like you said. So. Yeah. It's an interesting question though, yeah. like, they're very you, different times. Are you guys, I think this is our last question and I, I, I have had this one, I think it's fun. Um, are you guys still house hunting? We kind of touched point on that, but we look at Zillow like every day. And it's not even just like, we look at Chicago and we look at Orlando, like ever since we went to DC a couple weeks ago, like we look at DC <laughs> a lot, which is crazy because it's so, so expensive. Yeah, but, and so like from left field of like, as far as like us becoming residents of. Yeah. It's more about like just the fun of looking for at houses. Kind mm -hmm. of like I look at like the mountains, like like actual cabins, like tree cabins in yeah. the, in the West. Yeah, we're always looking at houses, and I think like 
something that we didn't say before about moving in general is that the market is so nuts that we don't want to buy at this very minute. So it kind of works out that we want to have Teddy, want to have this more low key time and then hopefully things will be better when we're like can save a little bit more and are ready. Do you want to sign off? It's good to be home. It's good to be home. And thanks for sending in questions. That was fun. Yeah. Like, yeah. you just haven't done this in a long time. I think, yeah, I think we could do this more often. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's simple, but it's late. And I have a oh. early appointment tomorrow with my midwife. And now I start going every week. I say it's good to you. <laughs> Good night. Oh gosh. <laughs> we know what our goals are. We know what we hope to accomplish. And believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Productions. <laughs>